Okay, today we want to uh, run through a second law diffusion example. And so, <coughs> remember, second law um, involves a change in concentration at some point in the problem. So, for example, we could have a part given here, and let's say it's a 1040 steel. And what we're going to do is put it in an environment, probably with some carbon monoxide or some such in, in this environment at elevated temperature and that carbon dioxide is going to disassociate and the carbon is going to end up diffusing into the surface of the part. So we have um, second law because we start with an initial concentration and then we're adding carbon to the material. So let's say this is in a furnace. It's running at about 1100 degrees C. The furnace environment gives us a surface concentration of about one and a half weight percent carbon and uh, let's say we want to cook this for some length of time in order to produce what we call a case and a case is simply a hardened surface um, that surface will have a specified chemistry and a specified depth and the depth is determined based on engineering principles that you will learn in machine design um, if you're mechanical, and if you're a civil, you'll just have to trust a mechanical to do that kind of stuff for you. But anyway, um, sorry, it's just carbon. And so the goal is to get a case of four millimeters in this case, about uh, where we get the carbon content to half a weight percent. And of course, that means the carbon content will be significantly higher than half a weight percent as you move up towards the surface, be approaching one and a half at the surface. Now beware. The surface concentration is not the concentration out here in the atmosphere. It is the concentration of carbon on the surface or in the very surface layer of the part. That's a function of uh, atmosphere concentration, the material, the temperature, or several factors. All right. So the question here is what we would need to figure out is we want to find how long this needs to be treated. Okay. So, solution, obviously this is second law. Oops, that pen is not working. So, we're going to use the uh, solution to fix second law. And there's two different forms. You could rearrange slightly to get rid of the one minus. Um, this is the one that our text uses, so that's what we'll work with. This is a solution to a differential equation. You want to recognize that on this side you have initial conditions, boundary conditions, and your variable, which would be C0 is your concentration in the part at time 0. Cs is a, so that's an initial condition. Cs is the uh, concentration at the surface of the part, or it's a boundary condition. And Cx is your variable, the concentration at some position x. And that's a function of this earth thingy, which is a, uh, a messy function that you do not have in your calculators. Uh, and the position in the part, uh, diffusivity, and then how long it's cooking time. So when you face one of these kinds of problems, I really recommend that you make a list anytime you deal with something like this. And be sure that you have all the pieces that you need in play. So just make a list of all the variables in your problem or in the formula. And we just start plugging in, um, identifying them. So CX is my target concentration to half a weight percent. Now C0 is my concentration at time zero. And if you look, I didn't actually give you a uh, word description of that, but the alloy specification tells us what that composition is. So let's just have a little aside here. We'll just do a bubble. In the ASTM steel alloy designation, you have four digits. First two digits, XX, tell me the alloy family. An alloy family means, in this case, 10 series plain carbon steel, nothing significant added besides carbon. 
Um, 11 series adds manganese, 41 adds molybdenum and vanadium, and so on. Um, and then YY is my weight percent carbon times 100. So in this case, this is a 1040 steel. Point, the, the 40 divided by 100 would give me my weight percent carbon, so my weight percent carbon is 0.4. 1018 would be 0.18, and so on. Okay. So C0 is 0 0.4 weight percent, and right away we say, well, good, CX, my target should be higher than 0.4, or higher than my C0. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to be able to make that target except by removing carbon, right? And the surface con concentrations, 1.5 weight percent. X, we want that specification uh, is for 4 millimeters, which is 4 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. You may want to do that in terms of meters right away. And then we need the diffusivity, which you may have to calculate, but in this case, I asked for 1,100 degrees. And so if you go look at your equation booklet, and uh, the reference booklet that you have, 1,100 degrees, uh, is already calculated for carbon and iron, and it's 5.3 times 7 minus 11 meters squared per second. And then time, we don't know. Okay, so we're ready to go, and so we want to plug in. I do recommend that you not plug everything in. Let's just uh, start with the stuff outside the earth. So we get CX minus C0 over supply, or surface, minus C0, 1 minus, and just leave this as earth of Z because we don't know what this argument is. We're going to have to find it. If you do your arithmetic and algebra, you end up with that. 0.909 is the earth of Z. Now, what is this earth? Earth is a the error function, and you're going to be using the tabulated version of the error function, which here it is in your equation book. Um, if we look down at 0.909, we see, oh, it's between 1.1 and 1.2. It looks like it's pretty much 1.2, but you won't always have one that's so obviously uh, close to one of the known values. And so we need to uh, do an interpolation. And we're going to do a linear interpolation, and, and that's a dangerous thing to do, um, potentially. If you were to do an inter linear interpolation on these two diffusivities, um, your answer would be wrong, and I would count it wrong, because the diffusivity is an exponential function of temperature, and these two points are pretty far apart temperature-wise. 200 degrees Celsius is a long way. So it's not appropriate to do a linear interpolation here, because you know this is a nonlinear function, and you're points you're interpolating on are not very close together. However, with the Earth function here, what we have is points that are very finely spaced. And so the, the uh, variation of the function between 0.7 and 0.75 is very close to a straight line. And if you do a linear interpolation here, then you'll be all right. Even though this function is very obviously not linear. It starts out looking a little bit linear, but then crosses over from, uh, right, and asymptotically approaches the value of 1. And so it's very definitely a nonlinear function. But let's do a linear interpolation. So what you would do is pull out of the table the values that you have in the table that are around the values we're interested in. So 1.1 and 1.2 give us values of the earth 0 0.8802 and 0 0.9102. And then what we need to find is a z-value that goes with 0 0.909, okay? Now, what we're going to set up is that this difference is proportional to that difference and divided by that difference and that divided by that difference. We're going to take the red over the blue differences. We get z minus 1.1 and this is going to be 0 0.909 minus 0 0.8802. And these are work as a ratio, proportional, and divided by the total distance, or difference. And if we turn the crank and solve for z, you'll find that z is actually 1.2. So because we were really close to um, that value on the table, you would not have been introduce significant error by not interpolating, but I wanted to show you the process. All right, so now what that says is we know the value of z, of the argument of the error function, 
and that value z has to equal x over 2 times the square root of dt. And we know x and d, but we don't know t, so we can solve for our unknown t. So the relationship that we have is that z is x over 2 square root dt. Now if we rearrange this, so t is equal to x squared over 4 z squared d, we can just plug in our knowns, right? x is going to be 4 times 10 to the minus 3 meters, and you need to use meters because your diffusivity is in meters squared per second, and so for that to work, you need meters there. And then z is unitless, just 1.2. And so if you plug in all your numbers and turn the crank, you should get 52,410 seconds, which works out to 14.6 hours, or you should probably re uh, report 52,000 seconds. I don't care. Um, don't overclaim here, though. This is realistically 15 hours because we only have two sig figs. Okie doke. So that is a fixed second law. Um, if you get ridiculously short times, your alarm should go off in your head. Um, we're asking for fairly substantial change in carbon content at a fairly great distance. Four millimeters is a long way. In fact, it's, it's unusually deep for a case in most cases. Um, so you need to think about this. Also, be, because it is a, a large amount of diffusion, 15 hours is not um, out of line. If you're asking for a lot of diffusion and you get something in the order of minutes, let alone seconds, then you know you're, you've made a serious mistake. So, all right, that's a fixed second law problem.